everyone. Welcome to Hard Copy, the program where we bring you the people behind the news. I'm Maupe Ogun. At the beginning of the week, Nigeria was a year older, celebrating 57 years of independence. For many, the country has come a long way, but for it to go farther, it may have to rejig the manner in which it's currently governed. But well, tonight, I seek the perspective of a governor who not only leads one of the youngest states in the country, but is also currently said to be the youngest governor in Nigeria. What does Governor Yahaya Bello of Kogi State make of our current makeup, considering his experience as governor of Nigeria's confluent state? Well, we'll find out tonight. Governor Yahaya Bello, you're welcome to Hard Copy. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm going to start from your Independence Day speech to the people of Kogi State. You said the only way politics in Nigeria can change to accommodate more young people in high positions of leadership is for youths already in leadership to demonstrate competence and capacity to lead. I shall not speak for others, but I, I repeat a solemn guarantee to succeed well as governor of Kogi State. Well, you've been in office now for 22 months. Would you um, say that you're 20 months? 20 months. 20 months yeah, okay, well, yeah. you're sworn in in January, I believe. Yeah. It's January of 2016. 2016. So we're in October. That's roughly October. about 22 months. Okay. Would you say that you're demonstrating the capacity to lead the people of your state? Thank you very much, Malpe. Um Yes, uh, I'll say that in affirmation. Because, uh, first of all, Nigeria is just uh, was or is 12 years older than me. And um, by the grace of God, based on what I met on ground, upon assumption of office, and what we have been able to achieve so far within the short period of time in office, considering where we're coming from, I will say that I've demonstrated that capacity to lead from the front. What would you say you've done differently? Because there are people who will say that you haven't done anything different from those who were there before you, that nothing has really changed in the style of governance to show, to differentiate that you're a young person in office. Thank you very much. Uh, when you look at, let me start from a general perspective, a broader perspective. Um, when you look at the way and manner Nigeria has been run and governed before now, it's not too different from Kogi State. And I'll tell you how Kogi State was being run in the past. Kogi State was being administered uh, basically on ethnic line, ethnic divide, religious divide, and class difference. Upon assumption of office, we made all these principles with which Kogi State was being run in the past a taboo. And then we came up with our own values, core values. In the past, in Kogi State, we are basically, in the three territories, there are three major uh, ethnic groups. The Igaras, who are predominantly uh, the ethnic group in Kogi State, the Ibiras, and the Okuns, aside other major, I mean, minor ethnic group. And of course, the two major religions, Islam and Christianity, and the class difference which is the haves and the have-nots. Um, in the past, I would rather say that appointments are usually lopsided, not based on your integrity, your character, and ability to serve. It is basically who you know and where you come from and the class you belong to. So upon assumption of office, we made these principles a taboo. And the core values are your ability to serve, your character and integrity, and what you are coming to put on the table. It will interest you to know that my deputy governor, I'm sure you are aware that I was sworn in without a deputy, deputy governor. governor at that time. I never knew him. But based on his track record, character and integrity, I nominated him to the House of Assembly and he was confirmed. Secondly, in the past, the SSG of a state must be a close associate of yours. But in my own time, or currently as we speak, my SSG, I barely knew her, knew her just 
24 hours and she becomes my SSG. Mm. And she, 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 she possesses that quality and character. Again, Governor Blair, usually, I, I, I'm okay. sorry to interrupt you, but okay. some people would say that what you've tried to do is play to, you know, dance to all the tunes. You've tried to balance your cabinet ethnically and also religiously, but they say that what you've ended up with is big government, which is also weighing down the recurrent expenditure of your state. Okay, uh, before I go to that, usually before in the past, the chief of staff from, of any governor, of the past governors, comes from their ethnic group. But my chief of staff come from a different ethnic group. That is that. When I assumed office, the past administration has well over 600 appointees, political appointees. How many do you have? Right now, we are just about 250. 250? Isn't yep. that heavy for a state like Hogi State? It is not heavy. In fact, first of all, the number of uh, uh, um, ministries that we inherited was, was about 21. But we reduce it to 15, just 15 commissioners. And majority of those appointments are part-time members. Part-time? Yes, part-time. So they're not full members who come to take salaries, wages, and incentives every now and then. They just barely take sitting allowances. You, re you realize that only recently, well, some yeah. time ago, there was an uproar over the fact that the state had made a budget to buy vehicles for uh, commissioners and aides and assistants, and you were still owing some money for, as salaries, which is a sore point. In fact, in your speech to the people of Kogi State, you did acknowledge that it is a sore point. You said prompt payment of salaries is still a vexed issue, but we will do our best to keep workers happy given the competing demands on the income of the state per time. However, it's inevitable that from time to time we must ask workers to stand with us in sacrifice. How much more sacrifice do you think the people of, are you asking of the people of Kogi State? First of all, when I assumed office, ordinarily uh, we are supposed to meet operational vehicles on ground, including the governor's vehicle we are taking away. Everything in government house, in various ministries, we are cutted away. You didn't try to get them back? Well, the process is on, and uh, I'll get to that. 